In the previous video, we showed setting method conditions and performing data acquisitions. Now that you have acquired your data, in this video we will go over some basic data analysis features that will help you generate meaningful results with your data. To utilize the post run software, you will first need to launch Lab Solutions. Once you have logged in, the main administrative screen will pop up. On the left hand side, you will see four tabs Instruments, Post Run, Administration, and Manuals. For supplemental information on data acquisition and processing theory, please see the manuals included in the software in the Manuals tab. Navigate to the Post Run tab, then double click on the Post Run icon to launch the data analysis software. Once Post Run is opened, you will see the assistant bar on the left. If you click on the main tile, you will see all the options you have accessible in the Post Run software, including Data Analysis, PDA Data Analysis, Calibration Curve, Post Run Batch, Data Comparison, Report Format, and UV Library Editor. As a starting point for most beginning users, we often direct them to Data Comparison to look at differences in chromatography between runs. To start Data Comparison, click on the Data Comparison icon in the Assistant bar on the left. Once it's opened, you will see the File Explorer window immediately to the right of the Assistant bar. From here, if you are not already in your project folder where your data files are located, you can manually navigate to it by clicking on the rightmost folder icon on the top of the File Explorer window. Alternatively, you can go up to File and then scroll down to select the project folder in order to be able to view your data files in the File Explorer window. Additionally, please note the tabs on the bottom of the File Explorer window which allow filtering of the files in the folder based on file type. Please make sure you have the leftmost tab selected to make sure your data files are visible in the folder. Now that you are in the correct project folder and your data files are visible, you can select as many files as you would like to compare by dragging and dropping them one at a time or using left mouse click and shift or left mouse click and control to select multiple data files and then drag them into the data comparison window. Once you have the files opened you would like to compare, there are additional options for viewing the chromatograms where either they are overlaid and share the same baseline as seen here, are vertically stacked separately, or you can also overlay and base shift the chromatograms to offset each baseline. To look at an individual data file in more detail, go back to the main assistant bar menu and select data analysis. Once that is opened, just as in data comparison, you will see the file explorer window. Select your data file you want to look at either by double clicking on it or by dragging it into the chromatogram view. One of the first processing parameters you will want to check in any data file is the integration parameters for your peaks. The best way to look at your integration parameters is to click on the edit option in the method view, then click on the program icon. You will then get a pop-up that will let you preview how your integration parameter changes will affect the chromatogram. In this example, I have four peaks of interest, but I also have a solvent front and a peak that I am not interested in. The easiest integration tool to use is the integration on and off features. This lets you specify the window of interest within the chromatogram to look at your peaks of interest. Once you have your window specified, to preview it, click Simulate. Additionally, one of the most useful tools is setting the minimum slope value for integration to start. The units of the slope are in microvolts per minute, so the typical starting value I recommend is 10,000. There are many other tools to use for setting your integration parameters. To learn more about them, press F1 to bring up the contextual help menu. Within each data file, there is additional data that you can overlay in data analysis. We refer to these as traces, and in order for them to be displayed, right-click in the chromatogram and select Display Settings. Once the window has opened, click on the Status tab, and then you can select which trace or traces you would like to view and on what scale. In this case, I am overlaying the gradient time program of pump B, as well as the pump A pressure. Now that the traces are overlaid with the chromatogram data, you can see the power of analyzing your data with all of this information viewable simultaneously. You can see where your peaks are eluding off in relation to your gradient and how the pressure of your pump is varying with the gradient throughout the run. When looking at data reliability or in the course of method development, this is vital information. Another great feature within Lab Solutions software is the ability to roll back data to the time it was acquired. If for whatever reason, during the course of processing the data, like changing the integration parameters or quantitating through a method file, if you would like to start over and roll back the data to at the time of acquisition in order to reprocess it, you can. With the data file open, go to File, select Roll Back to Original Data. It will prompt you to see if you are sure, then click OK. In addition to being able to roll back the data, you can always look at the hardware and method conditions that were used at the time of acquisition for any data file. With the data file opened, you need to select Method, Data Acquisition Settings, then click on Instrument Parameters to look at the method conditions for the data file.
In order to look at what hardware was used at the time of acquisition, once more go up to Method, Data Acquisition Settings, and select System Configuration. This will show you what instrument hardware was used at the time of acquisition. Next, I would like to walk you through using the Compound Table Wizard. The purpose of this wizard is to provide you a guided step-by-step -step process to identify your peaks of interest and get the necessary information entered to allow for a quantitative result once a calibration curve has been generated. To begin the Compound Table Wizard, in Data Analysis, click on the wizard icon in the assistant bar. The window that pops up first shows some initial screening criteria for your chromatogram. This includes minimum peak width, slope, drift, and minimum area or height. As we have done before, you can also click on the program icon and manually apply integration parameters and preview the results before applying to the data file. Once you click next, you will be shown the peak table that has been generated based on your criteria. You will need to select from the list what peaks of interest you would like to be entered into the compound table. Please note that when you check the box, the peak is highlighted on the chromatogram with a vertical line to provide you with confirmation on your selection. Once you click next, you will be asked to enter the quantitative information. You can choose to enter this now or it can be entered in later when creating a calibration curve to quantitate your unknowns. If you choose to enter the information now, you will need to select from the drop down menu your method of quantitation, whether it be external or internal standards, the number of concentration levels you are using to create the curve, weighting and line fitting criteria as well as units. Please note that the units are for your own reference and not used numerically when calculating the calibration curve. Once you click next again, you will have an opportunity to adjust the identification criteria for the peaks. This is basically the wiggle room you are granting the software when identifying your selected peaks at that time. If your chromatography is slightly shifting from run to run, you may need to widen these values in order for the software to identify your peaks of interest. Generally speaking, our advice is for you to leave these values at their default level. Any shifting in peaks represents a challenge or problem in your chromatography method and you should not compensate for that with software unless absolutely necessary. Finally, when you click Next, you will be presented with the compound table you have created. Your peaks of interest you selected will be auto-named based on their retention times. You can go in and manually change them to reflect the names you wish to identify them as. By default, each one of your peaks will be identified as a target. If a given peak represents an internal standard or a reference, you will need to select that from the drop-down menu of the sample type here. Additionally, if you entered any information regarding the quantitative method and the number of levels, you will have an opportunity to enter in the concentrations for each of the levels you specified. When you finally click finish, the changes you made will be applied to your data file and should be reflected in both your peak table and your compound table. Notice how the peak table is now reflecting each of my peaks of interest and identifies them in the chromatogram when I click on them individually in the row. In the next video, we will guide you through creating a calibration curve based on serial diluted standards to quantitate your unknowns. Thank you for watching this video guide on basic data analysis. For more video guides, please visit our YouTube channel. If you have any questions or require additional support, please don't hesitate to contact us by calling our 1-800 number. Excellence in Science. Shimazu.